Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Discovery Church. Please stand and join us as we begin our worship. this morning, excited about what God's going to have to say to us this morning, happy to be in each other's company again, but a little sad that all the decorations are gone because that was really fun. It's kind of like when you take down all the Christmas decorations and then it's just winter. We do have some exciting stuff going on. Um, Our, do we need a missions announcement? You do want to share? Sure. Okay. So Water for Tanzania in the month of August, Um, thank you for your contributions so far. Hopefully more will come in uh, throughout August. We're also going to focus in August on preschool. So we're going to have two things running at the same time because preschool is going to start up. And Emily Hall Hall reached out to me. She's their director of uh, preschool. And she said, can she come in and and promote preschool for August? And so we're going to do that as well. So we're going to run both. So they'll be looking forward to uh, two missions that we're going to run simultaneously in August. uh, And because we were thankful for the preschool and she did a great job helping us in VBS as well. So thank you. (laughs) Yes, ma'am. Exciting things are going on. Um, are there any other announcements, anyone else? We are still looking for members of the care team, so if you're interested in helping, um, we can definitely connect you um, with that opportunity. And if you're not sure what it is, just see me or one of the session members and we'll be glad to explain more about it. But basically the care team are the people who notice when you're not here and reach out to make sure you're okay. Um, coordinate things like meals for someone who's had surgery or is going through something. Um, So do let us know if you're interested in participating in that way. Are there any other announcements? Anybody? Uh. Yes, Um, I don't know what the next date is. Um, He did go ahead and do the first date 
last Monday, which was tough for us because we were just coming off of VBS, but um, there will be the next date coming out. Um, I think he was going to ask Kelsey to put it in the newsletter, so keep your eye on that. I don't have it this morning, so I, I don't know what to tell you, but, but yes, we're going to continue on with The Chosen and, um, and have some discussions around some of those episodes is what we're hoping to do, just to generate some conversation about the gospel and about Jesus. Thanks for asking that. Are there any other announcements? Yes. Oh my goodness. It looks amazing. It's one of those deals where you didn't realize how dirty it was until it was clean. When you took all the furniture out and went, Whoa. wow. <laughs> The grout looks awesome. Yeah. Anybody have any questions about that? Our dog made it into the picture. Oh, nice. I love it. So I, I, when, when they cleaned up, I reached out to Ron and said, hey, they look great. Did you do this? And he said, no, I didn't do it. And so I reached out to Melanie, and I said, Melanie, did you do this? And she said, no. And so I broke down everybody that I could <laughs> see that, that I saw that was here at some point that helped to do it. So Ron and Emily and Bob and everybody that was here yeah. because they did it. It's, it's a huge difference to see those it, floors. It huge is. Difference. It should be done every year. And then we filled it up again yesterday. <laughs> no good deed, Fred. No good deed. It was already wrong. Um, are there any other, any other questions, announcements? All right. Well, let's pass the peace of Christ. <coughs>
to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. See you high and lifted up. Shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy. of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Jesus lifted high, banner that flies across this land, that all men might see the truth and know He is the way to heaven. We want to see Jesus lifted high, banner that flies across this land, that all men might see the truth and know He is the way to heaven. We want to see we wanna see, we wanna see Jesus lifted high. We wanna see, we wanna see, we wanna see Jesus lifted high. We wanna see Jesus lifted high. Banner that flies across this land, that all men might see the truth and know He is the way to heaven. We wanna see Jesus lifted high, banner that flies across this land, that all men might see the truth and know He is the way to heaven. We wanna see, we wanna see, we wanna see Jesus lifted high. We wanna see, we wanna see, we wanna see Jesus lifted high. Step by step we're moving forward Little by little taking ground Every prayer's a powerful weapon Strongholds come Tumbling down and down and down and down We're gonna see We're gonna see we're Gonna see Jesus lifted high We're gonna see We're gonna see Gonna see Jesus lifted high Be my hope, be my 
song, Jesus. Be the fire in my heart, be the wind in these sails, be the reason that I live, Jesus. It's time once again for the prayers of the people, and we like to begin that time with praises to God for all the things that we've seen him at work doing this week. Who would like to start us off with the praise today? Yes, ma'am. That's fantastic. That's wonderful. So Miss Jackie is praising God for a couple of days with her baby sister who's better than she has been in a long time. Who else has a praise they'd like to share? Sorry, I, I was writing the word prayer and trying to say the word praise. That's really hard to do. Um, I will offer up praises to God that um, Lynn is in Kentucky um, today with her brother and sister-in-law. Her brother is scheduled for surgery on his brain on Tuesday, and um, he's at the University of Kentucky. They're going to figure out what is going on in there that's making it hard for him to see and hard for his brain to interpret what he sees. Um, so... She went out there, and she drove herself, and it's like an eight-hour drive, and she got there just fine. So um, praise to God for travel mercies for Lynn, and we'll definitely keep Michael on the prayer list. I have another praise. Um, this one comes from James's dad, Neil Brantley Sr. Um, he is struggling with a lot of health issues right now and the family have called in hospice and grandpa um, is alternately aware and not aware of the situation in the times that he's very aware he has shared with me how much it means to him that you're praying for him he said they don't really know me but we're brothers and sisters because we all love jesus and it's touched his heart that you're praying for him and that he's on your mind. So um, praises to God for you guys and your rich prayer life and all the things that that does in our community. We'll ask you to continue to pray for Neil Sr. And for Grandma B as well. Who else has a praise they'd like to lift up? All right, let's turn to prayer. Who needs prayer this week? 
Uh huh. Oh. It is coming on strong again. There's been a resurgence recently. So two sisters and both of their families have pretty bad cases of COVID. But we'll pray. Yeah, right? We'll pray for healing and for no long COVID. Who else had it? Uh huh. For Miss Peggy, we'll continue to remember her. Ask God to continue to heal her. Yes, Fred. Okay. We will pray for travel mercies for Margie's mom. Who else? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Moving on Thursday. All right. Pam. All right. Pam traveling to Pennsylvania. Yes. Mm hmm. Who else? Uh huh. Michael Hodges. Okay. Michael Hodges is in the hospital. Do you know where? Okay, here in, in Johnston County. Okay. Okay. Say again. Okay, that's wonderful. Who else? I saw another hand. No. Anybody else? All right. Yes, sir. It's a powerful thing. Hope can overcome a lot. So we will pray for hope. Who else? All right. Well, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we come before you this morning with our hearts filled with praise, Lord. Excited to see what you're going to do next. Happy to be included in your plans, Lord. Happy to be your hands and your feet here in this neighborhood, in this community, in this town. We thank you, Lord, that you include us in your plans and that you let us help you. Even though you don't need help, you include us and we thank you. Father, we have so many things to praise you for. For Miss Jackie's baby sister, who was in better shape than she has been in a long time, we thank you for that time, Lord, and the hope that it brought. For Grandpa B. Neil Sr. and his moment of absolute praise for you that so many people are praying for him, we thank you, Lord. Father, there are so many who need prayer. We'll begin, Lord, with... Michael Lynn's brother. We pray, Father, for an absolutely flawless brain surgery for him on Tuesday. 
We pray, Lord, for strength, for recovery. We pray that you'll heal him and that his faculties will return, that he'll be able to see and that he'll be able to interpret what he sees, Lord. And we thank you for little sisters who push people to move forward with their treatment. We thank you for her safe travel, Lord, and we pray that you'll continue to keep her safe. Lord, we ask for your blessings of peace on Neil Sr. We thank you, Lord, for all the days that we're able to have conversation and hear his stories and just be in his presence, Lord. We thank you. Father, for the two sisters whose families both have pretty bad cases of COVID, we pray for absolute healing for all of them. We pray, Lord, that there will be no long-lasting effects, that when they're well, they're well. And we thank you, Lord, for what you're about to do. Father, for Miss Peggy, we continue to pray for her healing, for her recovery, Lord, uh, for all of her strength to return and for her to be able to read. We ask it in Jesus' name. Lord, for Margie's mom, as she travels, we pray for travel mercies. We ask for your blessings on Pam as she travels also. And we thank you, Lord, that you keep us safe. Lord, for Janice, whose son and daughter-in-law are moving on Thursday, we ask for safety and protection. We ask for um, for that to go smoothly, Lord, and for the adjustment to be quick. And we thank you, Father, for opportunities that you give us. Lord, we lift up Michael Hodges and ask you, Father, to heal his body so that he can return to all of his activities that he enjoys doing. And we thank you, Lord, for making us aware that he's sick. Father, there are so many people who live today in a state of depression or sadness or loneliness that just blots out hope. And we pray, Father, that the hope that comes from you can be introduced back into their lives. Father, we pray that you'll use us to deliver hope to those who don't have hope right now. We pray, Father, that you'll make a way that we can deliver the hope that we find in you to everyone, not just some people, but to everyone, Lord. Help us reach out. Father, we lift up all the people who are here, and we thank you. And we lift up those who can't be with us today. And we thank you for them as well. Lord, we ask you to bless us now as we move into your message and your word. Father, when Jesus was here and the disciples asked him how they should pray, this is the prayer that he shared with them, and we say it together now. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I'm going to take it slightly out of order and share this scripture with you. This is from John chapter 14, verses 16 and 17. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate who will never leave you. He is the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth. The world cannot receive him because it isn't looking for him and doesn't recognize him. But you know him because he lives with you now and later will be in you. Jesus said that to his disciples. And he was talking about 
Wow, that was really hard to do with one hand. He was talking about the Holy Spirit. So when you try to explain the Holy Spirit and who he is to children, it gets interesting. Is he a ghost? No. But some people call him the Holy Ghost, so that's confusing. Who is he? So this is one illustration that I like to do. The Holy Spirit is one of the persons of God. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. In the Holy Spirit, you can't see him. So yes, technically he is invisible. But you feel him. So look at these balloons. One of them, nice and round and playable, right? We could do all kinds of fun stuff with that. One, completely flat. Still a balloon, but flat. This one is fun and playable because it's filled up. This one is not fun and not playable because it is not filled up. It's not being used for its full purpose. Now, are there things you can do with a flat balloon? I'm sure there are. I don't know what any of them are, but I'm sure there are. But with this balloon, so many things can be done. You can play with it over a net. You can shoot it. If you untie it, it'll fly all around the room like a crazy thing. You can kick it. You can bop it. All kinds of stuff you can do with this balloon because it's filled up and it's being used according to its purpose. The Holy Spirit is kind of like the air in this balloon. When you are filled up with the Holy Spirit, you are being used to your fullest purpose. You are playable at that point. And all kinds of things are possible when you're filled up. So let us all be filled with the Holy Spirit so that we can be used for our absolute best purpose. Amen? Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, thank you for filling us up. Help us never to stand in your way, but to give you your way in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Our scripture today also comes from the book of John. This is John chapter 6, verses 1 through 14. It's a story you know. And I'm reading from the New Living Translation. After this, Jesus crossed over to the far side of the Sea of Galilee, also known as the Sea of Tiberias. A huge crowd kept following him wherever he went because they saw his miraculous signs as he healed the sick. Then Jesus climbed a hill and sat down with his disciples around him. It was nearly time for the Jewish Passover celebration. Jesus soon saw a huge crowd of people coming to look for him. Turning to Philip, he asked, Where can we buy bread to feed all these people? He was testing Philip, for he already knew what he was going to do. Philip replied, even if we worked for months, we wouldn't have enough money to feed them. Then Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. There's a young boy here with five barley loaves and two fish. But what good is that with this huge crowd? Tell everyone to sit down, Jesus said. So they all sat down on the grassy slopes the men alone numbered about 5,000. Then Jesus took the loaves, gave thanks to God, and distributed them to the people. Afterward, he did the same with the fish, and they all ate as much as they wanted. After everyone was full, Jesus told his disciples, Now gather the leftovers so that nothing is wasted. So they picked up the pieces and filled 12 baskets with scraps left by the people who had eaten from the five barley loaves. 
When the people saw him do this miraculous sign, they exclaimed, Surely he is the prophet we have been expecting. This is the word of the Lord. The math of God. First, a few math jokes. I can't resist, honey, I'm sorry. For those of you who don't know, math is James's thing. He teaches high school math. Why was the equal sign so humble? Because he knew he wasn't less than or greater than anyone else. (laughs) Feel free to use these later. Why did the student do multiplication problems on the floor? The teacher told him not to use tables. Why was the math book sad? Because it had so many problems. That's probably my favorite. That one's a real groaner. Sorry. In preparing for today's lesson, I've thought about math more this week than I have probably in, I don't know, a really long time. Since the days of Molly and Emily sitting at the table crying with James trying to teach them high school (laughs) math. (laughs) Those were hard days, hard days. It's hard not to love math in a house with a math teacher. But the thing that has stood out to me is the reaction that you get when you ask people about math. So if I said to you, how do you feel about math? About two-thirds of you would say, oh, I was terrible at math. And the other third would be like, hmm. And then maybe one of you would be excited about it and want to have a conversation. In my experience, going to math um, things with James, conferences, stuff like that, yes, math people do party. Um, Sometimes the subject is a total conversation stopper. We were at the Governor's Awards one time, the Governor's Awards for Innovation in Teaching. James and his colleagues were nominated. And... Literally, it's a room full of professional educators, the cream of the crop, the best there are. And as we went around meeting people, they would say to James, so what do you teach? And he would say, I teach high school math. And they would say, oh, good for you, and walk away. (laughs) (laughs) Or God bless you, and walk away. There's like no further conversation. It doesn't happen that way when you talk about English or whatever, but it does with math. The math that we want to talk about today doesn't work the way the math that you were taught in school works. When we were in school, they taught us really early, as little, little kids, the basic facts of math. When you're in elementary school, you learn addition facts and subtraction facts. Later on, you get multiplication and division facts. And they say the same thing to you every day. If you will learn these, all the rest of it will be easier. That is the truth. I have watched kids learn the facts early and excel, and I've watched them struggle to learn the facts early and struggle the rest of their math career. If you get the basics, all the rest of it's going to be a lot easier. So what about these facts? Once you understand them, 1 plus 1 equals 2, 2 plus 1 equals 3, Once you understand those, you can apply those to more complex problems, right? But if you don't have the basic building blocks, it's very hard to understand algebra or geometry or more. As a person who barely scraped by in calculus twice, I'm just saying I maybe should have quit while I was ahead. (laughs) So the basic facts of God's math The way God does math are a little bit different. God's math doesn't work like the math of the world. It doesn't resemble the math of the world very much. There's some basic facts that we need to master about God's math, and then all that complex stuff will seem a lot easier to us. So let's look at the basic facts about math, God's math. The first one is, you can't outgive God. Can't be done. We'll talk more about that. The second one is that God's generosity is born of love. He gives because he loves. 
And the third one is, God is the God of more than enough. El Shaddai literally means more than enough. So let's look at this very first math fact. In God math, you can't outgive God. He is generous in all things. Let's go back to our story. Are y'all hearing that feedback? Let's go back to our story. In our Bible story today, <clears throat> Jesus has been arguing with Sadducees and Pharisees and all of the leaders all day long. He crosses over the Sea of Galilee for a change because really sometimes that's the only way he could get any peace was to get on a boat. And so he crosses over. He gets off on the other side, and already there's a crowd coming. The man was besieged with people. People wanted to be in his presence because they never knew what he was going to do, but they knew he was going to do something. They wanted to hear his words because nobody had ever explained the scripture to them the way that he did. It was making so much sense to them, so they followed him literally everywhere he went. So he sees yet another big crowd coming towards him. And I love this part. I love this part. I can just picture a wicked little smile on his face as he turns to Philip and goes, where can we buy bread for all these people? And remember, there were 5,000 men, so there might have been 10,000 people, including women and children. Where, were, where can we buy bread for all these people? There's not a city on the Sea of Galilee at that point with enough stores to buy that much bread at one time. It doesn't exist. And not only that, but if they could get the bread, they don't have enough money. There's not enough money. Jesus knows all this. He asks the question because he's including Philip. He asks the question because he wants Philip to think that all the way through. Now, we all know that when churches plan things, there's that one person that is super, uber, totally prepared for every contingency. We have one of those people in this building. If the apocalypse should approach, find Molly. Her purse contains everything that you will need for survival. She's got it. She's got it. Her, her good friend from college calls her her apocalypse buddy. It's like, if, if the end should come, I'm going to find Molly. There is that person who asks all the questions. Well, what are we going to do if this happens? And what are we going to do if that happens? And what if this happens? What's our contingency here? There are people who are just called to plan. I'm sure that there was a disciple like that who would already asked all those questions, but they didn't ask Jesus. So they didn't know what he was up to. The Bible tells us that Jesus already knew what he was about to do. He already had it. When he crossed over the Sea of Galilee, he knew 5,000 people were going to show up. And he knew there was no food for them. And he knew that they weren't prepared to stay a long time and had brought food with them because they didn't know that was all going to happen. But he did. So poor Philip, we don't have enough money. And even if we did, there's not enough bread. I don't know. And then something really weird happens. Instead of Peter speaking up, which is usually how it worked, this time it's Andrew, his brother. Andrew says, well, there's this kid. <laughs> Think about this first basic fact. You cannot outgive God. This boy, this nameless boy, we never find out his name, had offered what he had, which was two fish, and these are not great big trout, okay? These are fish, and five barley loaves. Now, loaf is a little bit misleading. What it really means is a roll about the size of your fist. So he had five of those and two fish in a little basket, and that was probably his food for the whole day, and that was the only food they had come across. Jesus knew what he was going to do. But Andrew 
in offering it said, it's all we can find. But what good is that for all these people? And I could just see the smile on Jesus' face. He didn't say, watch this. He didn't say, I got this. But I know that they could look at him and tell something is about to happen. And it's big. So he says, have everybody sit down. Have them all sit down. And he takes the food. He blesses it. He breaks the bread. They pass it out. The question comes from children about this story. How did he do that? I don't know. But I know it didn't happen until they started passing it out. Until they did what he asked them to do, the miracle didn't occur. It's like when he did water into wine. It was when they started to do the things that he told them to do that the miracle happened. It's like when the lepers were cleansed, it was not until they started to go do what he said to do that all of the sores were healed. It's in the obedience that the miracle happens. So that boy gave what he had. And maybe he didn't know what was going to happen, but he just thought, well, at least the teacher will get to eat today. And he was happy to give it because he didn't want Jesus to be hungry. He wanted to hear more from him, right? He had no idea what Jesus could do with that little bit that he had. But he gave it freely. And he gave it unselfishly. And he gave it, gave it expecting nothing. And that's how God gives. He gives to us freely. He gives to us unselfishly. He expects nothing. That's how he gives. And that's how that little boy gave. And for Jesus, that was enough. They passed out food to everyone. They did the same with the fish. Everyone had food. They all ate to their fill. The Bible says that they all ate as much as they wanted. It was like Thanksgiving. You know, you look forward to it for a month or maybe more. It takes at least a whole day to cook it all, sometimes more than that. And in 20 minutes, you've eaten all you can hold. <laughs> and it's over. <laughs> They all ate all of their fill. There's no way that you can outgive God. That little boy gave what he had. Jesus made it enough. When we each give what we can give, God will multiply it. And the cool thing is, the little boy got to eat too. He got to eat more than he brought. He probably did eat more than he brought. They all did. Because God gives so generously. Second fact, God's generosity comes from love. He gives because he loves us. When everyone had eaten, Jesus said, okay, now take some baskets and pick up all the leftovers. Um, they had 12 baskets full of leftovers. And these are not little baskets. These are like fishing baskets. Oops, sorry. These are big Big baskets full of food. Twelve of those they picked up. Because Jesus didn't want anything to be wasted. Right? People can use that. Stewardship is important to God that we take care of the things that he does give us. But God's generosity is about love. Jesus fed those people because they were hungry and they needed him. He fed those people because he loved them. And this is the thing that occurred to me this week that I had not thought about before. Jesus came to seek and to save the lost people of the house of Israel. That's who he came for. They were supposed to be the miracle and the recipients. And we're almost like the leftovers that got gathered up. We're almost like the 12 baskets. Because he wasn't sent intending to gather us up too, but that's what happened. Jesus gathered us up because he loves us. 
God gives because he loves. Thirdly, God is the God of more than enough. El Shaddai, the God of more than enough. God does not give greedily. He doesn't grudgingly reach in his back pocket and thumb through and find the smallest bill and give it to you. He doesn't give that way. The Bible tells us that God will give in a way that is a full measure, pressed down so that more can be added because he wants to give you all that he has. Do you understand that? He has it all, and he wants to give you it all. God's generosity knows no bounds. When we give... <laughs> It's crazy math. When we give in God's math, somehow he turns that around and pours out blessings on us. So then we have more to give and we give more. And then he turns that around and pours it out on us. And it's like this ever-growing cycle. I, I remember the first time as an adult I was starting to understand tithing. The pastor that I was listening to said, God will make 90% of your income go way further than 100. And I said, that math does not make sense to me. He said, it's spiritual math. You have to see it with spiritual eyes. He said, I tell you what, do it. Just do it. And if it doesn't turn out to be true, I'll pay you back. Well, that's a guarantee. God says, prove me, try me. Let me show you that 90% is bigger than 100. And he was right. <laughs> he was 100% right. I didn't believe that he would be, but he was. God's math is higher than ours, just as his ways are higher than ours. He doesn't do things grudgingly or with thought about what we can do for him. There's nothing we have that he needs. It all belongs to him. Think about some of the things that God has done in his higher math. When Moses and the Israelites came to the Red Sea, he didn't have them cross in slogging mud. They crossed on dry ground. Hear that, dry ground. God doesn't do things a little bit. If you ask him for help, he wants to pour out help on you. He wants to send people into your path to help you. He wants to give you everything that you need. Sometimes you have to wait, right? Sometimes there's something else he wants us to learn before he does that. But he always does it. God is the God of more than enough. When I was a little girl, I've told y'all this before, my favorite thing at my grandma's house was to make a cake with her. Loved to bake. And my grandma was one of those instinctive cooks. I didn't know that about her when I started learning to bake from her. And so we started simple with a box of cake mix, right? That was how we started. And for some reason, I could never get my cake to turn out like her cake. And she would say, well, honey, I've been doing this for 40 years, blah, blah, blah. And I just thought I ought to be able to do it too. So I started watching her carefully and writing down what she did because I realized at some point she never used a recipe, ever. Hardly any of her cooking was ever written down. And if it was written down, she didn't follow it, so it didn't matter. So we were making a cake and she said, don't forget to sift the mix. Wait, what? She said, you got to sift your cake mix. It doesn't say that on the box. It doesn't say that. She said, well, yeah, but you have to. Okay. So I did that, and it made a big difference. Later on, she said, don't forget to put the teaspoon of vanilla in. What teaspoon of vanilla? There's nothing on the box about a teaspoon of vanilla. What are you talking about? She said, well, you have to put vanilla in it if it's a cake mix. How, how would I know this? <laughs> I 
I said, okay. She, she said a teaspoon, so I got out the measuring spoon. I measured a nice level teaspoon. I put it in there, and she went, Pff. I said, what? She said, that's not a teaspoon. I said, that's exactly a teaspoon. She goes, no, 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 like this. She must have poured a full tablespoon in there. She had like three teaspoons in there. I don't measure this I'm aware of. She said, you got to be generous with the vanilla if you're using a cake mix. My grandma had it all figured out. She knew how God gave, and she gave exactly the same way. Even when she was making a cake, she was generous. God loves us so much. His basic math is so simple. But we look at it sometimes and we see 1 plus 1 equals 4,000. And we forget to see it with spiritual eyes. You can't outgive God. Whatever you give, He is going to turn it around. He, I promise you, He is going to turn it around. If it's your time, if it's your talent, whatever it is, He's going to multiply it if you use it. God gives generously because he loves El Shaddai, the God of more than enough. More than enough. Let's pray. Father God, we stand in awe of the way you give. We know, Lord, that you give not based on what we deserve, but based on the need that you see. Lord, we thank you. We thank you so much for your math. Your math that doesn't make sense to the world, but it makes sense to us. We're so happy, Lord, that you do things big. That you involve us in the big things that you do. That you give us a chance to be a part of some of these amazing works. Thank you for the opportunities like Water for Tanzania supporting our preschool, and all the other missions, opportunities that you give us. Thank you, Lord, for including us in your plans. Thank you for asking us questions that provoke us to think. Help us always to give generously the way that you do, Lord, whether it's our time or our talent, our money. We thank you, Lord. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray and all God's people say, Amen. Will the ushers come forward to receive the offering? Let's bless the offering. Father God, we thank you for all the gifts that you've poured out on us. We thank you for the opportunity to give back a portion of those gifts, Lord, for the building of your kingdom. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Please stand and join us for our final song.
about preaching about money because it, it's a major concern to a new preacher. How do you do it? How do you do it and not offend people? How do you do it and do it well? And he said this, Kimberly, you need to do it once a year whether they need it or not. <laughs> so you can check that off because we have taken care of that. It's a pleasure to serve in a church that's as giving as you guys are. Um, I, I dare say you don't know of a need that we don't address. So I just thank y'all so much. And um, from Tom's mouth to my ear, thank you for, for listening to that once a year. <laughs> Absolute necessity. <laughs> Let's say our benediction together. Wherever you go... God is sending you. Wherever you are, God has put you there. He has a purpose in your being there. Christ, who indwells you, has something he wants to do through you where you are. Believe this and go in his grace and love and power. And all God's people say, Amen. Come, let us sing a song. A song to play.